hello everybody and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live. We are coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West and of course at Elizabeth's desk. It's good to have everybody here with us tonight. I know that we have a few people watching so we want to say hi to everybody that, uh, that uh, tunes in. So if you have any comments or questions for the evening, man, just go right ahead and uh, uh, type them in and we have people watching and, and we'll, I'll be looking through them. And so if you have anything you'd like to ask or any comments, just please comment away. So we are really glad that you uh, joined us here tonight. We're excited about it. Let me go ahead right now and bring in my uh, my sidekick. Uh, she likes to call her co-host, but I'll say sidekick, uh, Kaylee Corson. So let's bring her on in. So Kaylee, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm glad you're here with us again tonight. How's things going today? Um, It's going pretty good. I'm tired, but I'm always tired. been a long day, huh? <laughs> It yeah. has been a long yeah, day. We, we've had kind of a long day here at the office as well, but uh, things are good, but it's fun to get to be back together See, again tonight, look, right? John has it right. It says co-host. Okay. Well, John and I will talk after this is over, but thank you, John. Thank you. Hey, everybody is joining in. we got Polly and Diane and uh, Jana and Ro Cobb is here. Jana no. Cobb is watching. And so Polly and everybody, uh, Megan. Lots of people joining in tonight, so it's good. There you go. I like that. I like that. Thank you, John. <laughs> all right. So, Katie, everything going all right? Yes. So, how are you looking forward to Fourth of July coming up? I am. I love. Uh, we live out in Pecan Valley, so we're actually able to shoot fireworks ourselves. So, y'all have so. a lot of fun on yes. that night. Yes, I'm excited. I think I think Martha has uh, her niece and uh, her husband are coming, and mm -hmm. their their son and uh, Martha's brother's coming. We usually kind of have some fun. We go out to Medicine Park and hang out and do some stuff so oh by the way great job Sunday on the national anthem thank Man, you. you you I showed was really up nervous. girl you showed up twice showed up. yeah you did yeah you did so you did a super job and I, I man we've been getting a lot of compliments uh from everybody about how the program went and how well uh, you did on the national anthem and I was just oh. going wow I'm glad it wasn't me singing that song and everybody else was too so <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everybody was like, Ugh, nobody wants to touch it. Yeah, were you a little nervous <laughs> doing it? Uh, a little more than a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every, every time I hear someone sing that song, I, I get nervous for them. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's if it was you singing Sunday or if it was uh, somebody on the football or basketball. I, I just I feel myself tensing up because uh -huh. there's so much that could go wrong with that song, <laughs> and or maybe for me it could, but maybe maybe not. But hey, everybody else is saying hey, you did an amazing <laughs> job, great job. So well, I joked with Keith saying that I would copy Fergie's version, and I've listened to it because I've joked about it so many uh -huh. times, and I was like, I'm gonna start singing it that way, and then <laughs> I was like stressing myself out. <laughs> how, how, how many times do you think you practiced that song once you found out Keith was gonna have you sing it? Oh goodness, I don't know. I know like. Saturday I called Josh was up in his room I called him I was like hey can you come listen to me sing the national anthem and tell me if I sing it right and then I sing it to my mom I were they, I probably sang it like 50 times were they the tired week. of hearing it probably yeah yeah probably. well you, you knocked it out of the park you did <laughs> a great you. job but you do on just about everything you do so but you showed up like always say, <laughs> you, you showed up so uh but we got a good show tonight as a matter of yes. fact uh, you know very, very well the first person we have coming on, right? Yes, I do. I know him just a little bit. A little just bit. A little so bit. we're we're going to be introducing him here in just a few here in just a few minutes. Uh, this on on kind of our where are you now segment. So we got another where are you now segment coming up, and I know you're going to enjoy uh, our first guest. So we're going to get to them here in just a minute. But before we before we move on, uh, last week we started a compatibility test to see how well we can work together because. Kaylee is really, really trying hard to uh, get to be co-host, and so I told her before we did, wait a second, look at that. We got the Texas flag showing up, don't we? Elizabeth, I can't believe what she did. Okay, hold on just a second. There we go. We'll advertise Dale more before we do Texas, huh? <laughs> anyway, back to what I was talking about. I was, I was distracted. That's, that's what the monitor does. It distracts me. But anyway, we, we, we've we been doing a test. Last week we played, what was it called? Heads Up. Heads Up. And we did pretty good. Although, I got to, I rewatched it, mm -hmm. and John wouldn't give me some points, but you cheated worse than I did. How did I cheat? This. Paper. Wait, you weren't supposed to do that. You were supposed to give me words. And you held up paper. John, I do don't do? think that's cheating. That's being resourceful. Okay, well, you cheated. But tonight, <laughs> we got a whole different game. 
what we're going to do tonight is we're going to see how compatible we are and how well you know me. And, and I think that, you know, if you want to be my co-host, then you should get to uh, make sure you know me well. So what we've done is I have some questions that are going to pop up on the screen and I'm going to put an answer down. Okay. And when I write the answer down, you write what you think I'm writing. And then we're going to see how many you get right. Okay, some of these I think are pretty easy, but uh, but we'll see. Okay. All right, so let, for you folks at home, you're, you're going to have the question that's going to be on the screen, and you'll be able to see them uh, as Kaylee and I are seeing them as well. Okay, so let's get the first first question. All right, what is it? Do you enjoy vibrant social events? Me. Now it's not you. Me. You think I enjoy? <laughs> and, and and so let's write it down and let's see what okay. we got. Okay. Don't okay. write so loud. Um, that's why I'm only writing two letters, so you don't know if I got the third one or not. Okay. All right. What do you think, Kaylee? Uh, I'm going to go with no. You don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> I love, man, I love going to big, the brighter, the louder, the better. So okay. you're not doing very well, are you? You listened to my, you that listened was to a, my, that you was a test to my run. pen, didn't you? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You tried to cheat again, girl. All right, so you I'm got one down. You're not, you're not doing well. You better <laughs> pick it up from here. Number two, what do we have? A friend is sad about something. Is in your what, so is your first reaction to support or to fix it? Do you think I'm I'm the one that wants to fix the problem or be uh, sympathetic and support them? I think it depends on the person. <laughs> okay, that's not. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Five seconds. <laughs> you didn't say there was a time limit. Well, we've only got an hour for the whole program. Okay? We got guests we got to get to, okay? All right, you ready? Yeah. What did you say? Not what you put. <laughs> <laughs> Fix. I'm a fixer, man. You talk to my daughters and my wife. Well, I would, I'm a fixer. Let me explain, okay? I I figured you I you fix like things for people like you know, but if I, like a random person, I don't know. Or somebody that you're not super close with, you wouldn't okay. just be like here. One thing that's showing that <laughs> Kaylee and I may not be so compatible is she thinks way too much. <laughs> I think that's I, a, think, I think that's a male I, female maybe, thing. Maybe that should have been a question. Do do I think too much? That would be no. That would be me. All right. So next one. Would it be tough for you to spend the whole weekend by yourself? Me. Would it be tough? Do you think it'd be hard for me to spend the whole weekend by myself with no one around? Okay. Let me. I didn't read it until after I wrote my answer. I feel like I'm doing awful. Well, Would it be tough for you to spend the whole weekend? Now, my wife and my daughters are probably answering these at home, and they already, they're already going. They're like, Kaylee. <laughs> Don't let Jade I'm gonna I'm going to get a meeting or a text from Jade after this. Okay, you ready? Yeah. And the answer is yeah. yes. Yeah, we got one. Yeah. All right, yes. It would be. I could not <laughs> imagine. As a matter of fact, sometimes, and my wife will tell you this, my daughters will tell you this. Sometimes when they're all gone for the weekend, by about Friday night at nine o'clock, I'll find myself going to Walmart just to have people around me. So yeah. All right, you got one. All right, Yay. next question. Next question. Are you still more bothered by mistakes you made a long time ago? Hmm. Mistakes I made a long time ago. So let's just see kind of what we're thinking on that one. All right, you ready? I went now. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's still a few things I'm going, oh, I can't believe that. So anyway, it's under the blood, amen? It's under the blood. All right, number five. Okay, have you gotten any? Got do any you right? like your eggs? How do you like your eggs? All right, Kaylee, how do I like my eggs? Let's see if you know this one. I don't know. I don't think that's ever come up, Harold. <laughs> Martha, I hope you're answering these at home, and I hope you're getting a bunch of them. I hope you're getting a bunch of them. I All don't right. think anybody so, can read this. How do you like them? I put scrambled. I like fried. <laughs> I love fried eggs. I think we need to stop. You're really, you're really, <laughs> I'm really doing, doing awesome. well. All right, John, how many do we have? How many did I give you? We used to have six left. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh gosh. All right. Well, let's we'll, do, let's we'll do go lightning one. fast. Yeah, lightning fast here. Do you find it difficult to relate to people when you, who let their emotions guide them? <laughs> I don't know if you want to answer that question. <laughs> all, all four of them know the answer anyway, so I wouldn't be lying. 
Do you find it difficult to find, uh, do I find it difficult to deal with people who are emotional? The answer is yes. <laughs> all right, you got one. Yes, yes, Kaylee, all right, did well, all right. Uh, that we just be a lot more people are tuning in. All right, do you say calm or freak out under pressure? All right, am I calm or do I freak out? Let me write all this down. And the answer is, what would you put? Calm. Calm, yes, calm. Uh, I, I try not to freak out very much. Do I don't well. ever think I've seen you freak out. So. Yeah, most people haven't, so there you go. Are you drawing, drawn to places with bustling or busy atmosphere? I, I think that should have been uh, yes or no. Yes instead or no. of, okay. yeah. Am I drawn to places with bustling and a busy atmosphere? Am I, yes or no? What do you think I am on that one, Kayla? You decide that one. All right, are you going to get it? That, that should, you've already had kind of a clue to that one. Let's see if you can get it right. Yes, I am. I love the, the bigger, the better, the louder, the better, the brighter. I love it. <laughs> Does your mood change quickly? Hmm, well, let me see about that one. Katie, what you think? I don't know. No, all right. Carrie, yeah. are you keeping score? Um, what do we got? Well, Sherry's at 100%. Sherry? Yeah, Sherry's at 100%. <laughs> Kim is at five out of nine right now. Okay, five out of nine. All right, you're, you're gaining. All right, next. Is your desk organized? Do I have to answer this question? <laughs> yes. Okay. Is my desk organized? I, I, I do. I try. I try. I try. It's not. It's probably not. Today is not. Okay, it's not. Okay. So my daughter, my my biological daughter, is answering quite a few of them. My my TV daughter apparently isn't doing so well. <laughs> All right. Next one. What we got next? What is your biggest phobia? Okay. I, I'm, now this one, I'm gonna give her double points if she can get this one. She can figure this one out. I'm gonna give her a double double points. If you can figure out what my biggest phobia is, what'd you get? Snakes! Snakes, absolutely. There you go, Kaylee. All right, all right. Yeah. Is that the last one? That's it. That's it. How many yeah. What's the score? She, uh, with the correct answer, she's seven for 11. Seven out of 11, all right. Yeah. Hey, you're passing test number two. <laughs> you did really well. I just so, needed to warm up a bit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She had to get her mind warmed up. So, but yeah, so. Uh, this is this is kind of like uh, our test to see how well we work together. Uh, she's getting closer and closer to being my my TV daughter. So yeah. there you go. So <laughs> that'll work, and we'll see how well the other daughters actually have done when I get home tonight. See how well uh, they they knew me. So uh, anyway, a lot of, hey man, we got a lot of people watching. Then they're laughing at you. So anyway, all right. So Kaylee, that was our test. Next week we'll do another one, and we'll do about a couple more to see how well. We actually are working together, but I think okay. so far, I think we're doing well. I think we're doing I think well. so. So what's next on our program? <laughs> next is the three things you need to know. Hit All it, right. John. All right. Thank you, okay. Kaylee. Hey, the three things that you should know right now uh, that we want to get through for First Baptist West. The very first one, and man, I'm really, really excited about this one, that we're going to have... Patrick and Sadie Duncan are going to be coming in beautiful calls here at First Baptist West She's on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Now, here's a picture of Patrick and Sadie and their kids, and they're going to be coming. Uh, they, they are originally from uh, from Alabama, but now they're they're in Louisiana, and so we're we're going to bring after uh, lots of praying from our our teams and different things that that they've done and the visiting with Patrick and he and Sadie have both been here in the Lawton and uh, so we're excited about them coming. Now a couple things that I want to mention about that is again they're coming on the 10th, 11th and 12th. They'll be here for those three days and during those three days we're going to have different activities. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have the schedule uh, set up by tomorrow. We'll post online with all the things that are going to be going on. We're going to have a couple events that we're going to have. Now we're going to be somewhat restricted because we're not going to be able to uh, do all the things that we would normally do, but we do have some cool things that we're going to be doing. One of the things that we want to mention to you is that uh, on Saturday evening, uh, we're going to have, and I believe it's going to start at six o'clock, but on Saturday evening, we're going to have a, a, a testimony time that Patrick and Sadie and the kids will be here 
But they're going, Patrick's going to be giving his testimony and, and sharing with you about his life. And, and we're going to be able to open up for questions and answers. So we're going to invite you to come on that Saturday to uh, get to know Patrick and Sadie and ask questions. Now, if, if you're a little concerned about whether or not you can be out in a group and be back in church at that time, you say, man, I'm just a little bit concerned about it. Well, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to uh, live stream that for you. So you'll be able to be a part of that Saturday night without actually having to come to church. Now, if you want to even ask a question, we'll have people that will be set up uh, for you to send in questions, and we'll even ask the questions for you. We want you to get to be a part of that. Then on Sunday, uh, Sunday the 12th, Patrick is going to be leading both our 8.30 and our 10.45 services. And the 10.45 service will be, again, live streamed as usual. So if you still don't feel comfortable, you'll be able to visit with him uh, and, and see him uh, do, do his thing on uh, Sunday morning. Then what we're allowing you to do is we're even allowing anyone who's a member, a resident member, and have been active in the church in the past year, we're going to allow you to uh, vote online so you don't even have to be here so what we need you to do though is we need you to contact the church and say that you would like to be a part of that but you're not sure that you can make it and, and be in a group setting at that point but yet you want to be able to vote if you will send us the information and and John where do we send that to if, if that'll come up on the screen firstbaptistwest.com slash ballot if you'll send that starting um, tonight then we'll have our secretaries we'll go over all of those and what we're going to do is we need you to tell us how many uh, voting ballots you're going to need and what we'll do is we will send those to you that Sunday morning through your email and we're going to then uh, till 12 15 that afternoon allow you to send your ballots back to the church and they'll be counted so we're doing everything that we possibly can to make it uh, convenient for you so just in case uh, you don't feel comfortable being in groups we're going to live stream on Saturday night the questions and answers and testimony we're going to live stream Sunday morning and we're going to send out at your request we're not just sending them out you must send the request to us and how many uh, voting ballots you're going to need and we will get those to you that Sunday morning so we're going to be putting all this on online but listen I want you to understand how excited we are about having Patrick and Sadie and the kids come and uh, be here in view of a call. So that's number one. Number two, the youth retreat. The youth retreat is coming up uh, on the 8th, 9th, and 10th, and we're going to be going to Beaver's Bend, and we're looking forward to being down there. And so uh, we want you to sign up if your student wants to go with us. They need to register, and uh, we also then will tomorrow night uh, at 6 o'clock, we'll have a, a mandatory uh, parent campers meeting in the fellowship hall we'll have social distancing so uh we'll, we'll be spread out in there but it's mandatory for a parent we're, we're as a matter of fact we would prefer the parent to come if, if both of you can't come we want the parent here uh, because we want to be able to go over everything so you'll know what's going on now if you're not able to make that meeting let's say something has come up then you still need to contact john you must visit with john our youth pastor john song prior to us going so uh, if you can't make it tomorrow night, you, you've got to get a hold of John. John, is there a deadline when you want them to be able to get a hold of you? Uh, the day before. The day before. Yeah, you, you can't. That that day, that day we leave on the on the eighth. That's too late. You need to be here and get with John, and he needs to visit with a parent, not a child. He needs to visit with a parent. So youth retreat. We're looking forward to a great time since we didn't get to go to Falls Creek this year. We're really looking forward uh, to that. So that's number two. Number three. Vacation Bible School Rally. Man, we are excited. Pastor, I got about. it. You got I it. I got it. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. You got news. What do you got? Carrie? These are the plans. The Aren't plans they exciting? Those are a lot of plans, Carrie. Whoa. This one was wait till after Christmas. We can get rid of that one. Okay. Yeah, we're not waiting for Christmas. This one, yeah, this was the map to all the kids' houses. And... But Barry said I can't fit all my teachers in the van, and okay. so that we can't go to everybody's house. Okay. So I had to get rid of that one. Uh, and then this one had a lot of gray, so we got rid of that I'm one. Lot. Gray area, oh, gray you know. Areas. Yeah, we don't want gray areas. We don't want okay. any gray areas. But I think this one is it. All right, what do we got? All right. Kaylee, you want to help me with this? 
All right, here we go. This is the exciting blueprint. Are we ready? All right, here it comes. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna have an amazing kids rally. All right. It's gonna be so exciting. We are gonna have all of our fun things in one big thing in the sanctuary, pretty much. Okay. And yeah. so we're gonna have our music there, we're gonna have our missions, we're gonna have interactive games. So, oh, I forgot that part. I didn't tell you about that part, oh, did I? Yeah. Well, okay. we're gonna stream it on Facebook and YouTube all right. and all that. And when we do that, we're going to put some interactive games so that people at home can do okay. it if they don't feel right. comfortable coming to the sanctuary. All right. Perfect. But everything else will be in the sanctuary where we can spread out and social distance. Okay. Good. All right. But we do have the option that you can stay and go to class for craft and snack and activities, okay. other activities that we won't have in the sanctuary. There'll be smaller groups and things like that. Okay. Worry we can, so we're gonna have that option available, but if you don't wanna do that, we're gonna have a bag where they can take it home with them. Okay, But Good. they can do all of it at home, they can do part of it at home, or they can do all of it here, or part of it here. Okay. So that's the plan, what do you think? I, I like that, I like that. I love the fact that we're gonna do a big worship rally for the for the big park right that, that's going to be able folks listen we, we're going to have the rally and that means that even if you're at home and your kids can join us in the rally yeah. we're going to have interactive games we're going to have high energy music and different things uh so if you're saying well i don't feel comfortable with our kids there yeah then you can do everything at home but you can still join us and not necessarily do it on your own. You can do it with us. Right. Very so good. the one of the things that's cool is we're going to have kids seating and we're going to have family seating. So okay. if you want to sit just by your family, you can sit just by your family, right. or they can sit with their the kids their age. Good. However, they however they feel comfortable. So okay. that's a cool part. Um, but I need something. What's that? You know, I always need yeah, something. You need something. <laughs> I always need something. Okay, I need two things now. Okay. I I thought of another one. Um, I need people to pre-register. Yes. Because we need to kind of have a pl an idea of how people want to participate. Okay. And so we need to know how many packs are going home, how many packs are going to be picked up, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So um, the John's got a link. All right. It's um, up and ready to go. Okay. Right there. That's there it. it. That's it. Moving all the way down. It. All right. Yeah. FirstBaptistWest.com that, that right there. BB, BBS. Yes. Okay. And so they can go on there and register. I also need volunteers. Um, and we have a meeting for volunteers. The first meeting that we have is Tuesday. Tuesday. July 6th. Is Sixth. that the right day? Tuesday, July 6th. Yes. Yeah. And so if you ha want some information or to understand more what's going on or are considering volunteering, please come July 6th, 6 o'clock. Okay, and we're really looking forward to it. We're going to do it differently than we've ever done before, and that's out of necessity. Yep. Uh, we we want you to know we are, boy, and I'm excited, we are having Vacation Bible School, okay? We are having it, and that's going to be the 19th through the 22nd. Uh-huh. Um, that's going to go Monday through Wednesday. We're only going to do it through Wednesday, right? Right. And then we're also going to be this, it's from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Yep. We're not going to go to 8, 36 to 8. And this year, and this year only, to help us with the, the social distancing stuff, we're only going to have uh, kindergarten through sixth grade. Right. Right. So we're not going to have anything in preschool or BBS this year, but it's going to be the only time. Don't so, wait. folks, listen, we're excited about getting to have Vacation Bible School. We worked hard at these plans. Carrie has got it set up, and we are ready, ready to go. So uh, let us know if you want to help in any way or go to this, this uh, page right here and re begin to register right now. The, 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 it's up and ready, mm -hmm. right? It's up All and right, ready. So we're excited. So, folks, Vacation Bible School is coming on its way. So we're very, very excited. Carrie, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to get my plans All together. Right. There you go. Get them up and we'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you, Carrie. All right, folks. So those are the three things that you should know about First Baptist West. Right now, we're going to go to our next segment, and, and we told you that uh, uh, we have some special guests. So the next segment we're going to have is every couple of weeks, we'll be doing a Where Are They Now? So John, let's get started with Where Are They Now? Okay. 
All right, well, our first guest here tonight, I want to I want to show you a video. Many of you know this is our first guest, but we want you to see him in action. Uh, these are years ago uh, when he was here at First Baptist West. So first, we got a short little video we want you to see of our first guest. him but but this is this is not what he looked like when I first came to First Baptist West uh, that was a few years in but I want I've got this other picture that I want you to see of our first guest uh, when I first actually came to First Baptist West nine years ago so let's pull up that picture <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> and and his sister is laughing like crazy so <laughs> take a look at that so anyway uh let's come on back here and uh want to welcome back to first baptist west we're excited to have matthew uh stringfellow and and his better half micah is here with us That's true <laughs> and so it's exciting to have you all here man you know we had planned on having here katie brought this up a couple of weeks ago and we were excited to have them on so i called him today to kind of set up mm. The, the, the Zoom meeting. Right. And he, you mentioned something. So what time do you want us there? And I said, well, we'll if you'll get online about six, he said, well, we'll I said, are you, wait, are y'all here? And he said, yeah, we're actually in a lot. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I even got more excited <laughs> to get to actually have you in person. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Sure has. So yeah. how are things going? It's going well. So you, we're we're so, moved and yeah. done a couple other things since. But yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been a long time. Hey? Yeah, it has. Yeah. So before, since you left here, I want you to go ahead and introduce the person who wasn't with you when I came. So why don't you introduce your, your, your beautiful wife to yeah. us? So uh, you already did well calling her the better half. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, they, and I and I joke that you know the places we go they keep me around because they like Micah, but this is my fantastic wife Micah, and I couldn't do the things that I do without her on my side. So Amen. yeah, or we we all marry up, don't we? Oh, yeah. Ministry. Yeah. We yeah. better, yeah. or we don't get to do the ministry <laughs> if we don't marry up. That's Amen. right. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, good. All right. So so uh, when you were here, you played in our in our praise band. Mm -hmm. And you also, you were in college, I think, by the time I got here. Yeah. I think you had already graduated, gone to college, and you were over here at college. Right. And you were working at the grocery store, right? Yeah, sure was, right there at Country Mart. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I remember, man, you, you'd have to reschedule and work trying to get, so you oh, could be man. here on Sunday mornings, man. I remember that. Yeah, that was, uh, it was, it was a busy time, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 So, so you, you graduated college, mm -hmm. and you majored in what while you were here? Uh, my bachelor's degree was a bachelor's of music and guitar performance and it uh -huh. was a classical guitar performance yes and mm -hmm. man you, you you can you can sure do some stuff on that guitar brother <laughs> thank I can you, tell you. Yeah, it, I appreciate been it. amazing and i know you've probably gotten better even since then yeah, maybe you've done a great job <laughs> so you graduated here mm -hmm. and then god called you where uh called me down to fort worth go to seminary yeah yeah so what were your first thoughts when god when you said God's wanting you to go to seminary and you felt that, what was your thought? You know what? My actual first thought was finally, because <laughs> that whole summer I had two options in my mind. And it was, I was either going to go as a journeyman with the IMB and spend uh -huh. two years overseas or go down to seminary. And I've been praying all summer, you know, I've been, and I've been prepping both doing the applications for both going through the material for journeyman, all that. And it wasn't until like mid July that I finally got the answer, go to seminary. And I was like, finally an answer. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, so you, it was good. Oh yeah. I, I was relieved. We were praying over that whole time. Oh, what, yeah. what, what's coming? What's coming? So Katie, how did it feel to have your brother back? It's nice. I've missed him. It's been a few years since we've seen each other. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you, you're really excited about all that God's doing in his life, huh? Yeah. It's really exciting seeing kind of where he started just playing in the band and then doing the youth music and kind of seeing where now he's doing it himself for his own church. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're very proud of what you're doing. So you were seminary and things were going well and right. something truly amazing the, one of the best things that could have happened to you at seminary what was that yeah i met this girl right here there you go <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yep, yeah good yeah. answer bro. I, I guess you could say the second best thing was i got the internship at the church that her and her parents were at 
Yeah. But definitely, the, if she still wins out is the best thing. Cause yeah. <laughs> because of that, you yeah. get to know her, that, right? Yeah. Because of that, I got to, I got so, to experience the best so thing. So at first, that was the first best thing. Yeah. And then, then God, you know, he yeah. promises that he can do above and beyond that which we've asked. There we so go. You got, to, you got to go as an intern, and then you met her. Yeah. So, so I, she's a sweet girl. So, Micah, how are you doing? I'm really good. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember the first time we got to meet, man, you, I was like, Wow. She's an amazing young lady, and so uh, you, you've been walking inside this guy for the whole ministry, right? Yes, sir. So walking by, you. putting up with, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how long have y'all been married? Well, we'll be married four years this August. Okay. Yeah. All right. Four years this August. Yeah. Wow, you're, you guys are an old married couple. Now. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a young, older married couple. Yeah, yeah married. something like that. So, so where are y'all living now? Yeah, we're uh, we're down to San Antonio. Okay. Yeah. And you, what's your position down there now? So I am the associate pastor at Thousand Oaks Bible Church. Okay. And so, uh, what that means is I still lead music. Um, uh-huh. You know, I'm doing uh, what Doug used to do for us here, right. uh, leading the music ministry. But then with that comes other pastoral things. I've been able to teach more. Uh, I've preached uh, once since we've been down there, and th- okay. uh, you know, a number of other things that have been added to the plate, so to speak. But it's been it's been a real blessing. Cool. Micah, how does it feel to be a pastor's wife actually now? Uh, Is this what you had in plan for, for your life? No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, but it's been really good because I knew God wanted me to serve in ministry, and I thought for a long time that that was going to be in Zambia. Uh-huh. And then I met Matthew, and we got married, and I was like, hey, God, I'm waiting on your call. I'm waiting for you to call us to Zambia. And I would talk to Matthew about it. And he was like, um, I don't really know that that's something God's calling me to do. And then I was like, well, God, when are you going to call us to the ministry? And then it was like, well, Micah, you are in the ministry. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, yeah. it's pastor thing. Yeah, that's not, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Unless you leave the country, you're really not in the ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was yeah. Boy, I spent a lot of time in not ministry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you guys are working together. So, mm-hmm. w- what's it like serving as a pastor and his wife? It's kind of get people. You really don't know it until you've been there, right? Right. So, so what do you? What are some of the finer points of being able to be the, working together and um, serving in the church? Man, it's it's really a, a it's a cool blessing because one of the things that we've gotten experience, and I'm sure you've experienced it. Um, is just the the way that we can complement each other as we serve, right? Yes. You know that there will be doing different events, and Micah is going to think of things differently than I will, and we can bounce things off of each other, and um, right. you know, and that we can talk together about how we're doing things, um, but also just to be able to do it together and spend time together, you know, because a lot of times, you know, at a regular job. You're not at home with your spouse and you're off for eight to 10 hours a day in that. But, you know, for for me, I get to I get to go to work and have my wife with me there some of the times, right, you know, because we right. get to serve together. So it's been um, and then just singing together has been a blessing, too. It's been it's been really fun. Well, that's what I was about to ask. Yeah. That you, you sing a lot with him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, every Sunday. OK, mm-hmm. you're part of the praise yep. mm-hmm. together. You guys yeah. get to, now I've heard you guys sing together. No, but really, really good. If I, man, if I'd known you'd been in person, I'd have said, "Bring the guitar." And oh man! Like, yeah, see, that, that's how you snuck in on me. You, yeah. you didn't have to perform, I was gonna say, man, I'd love to hear y'all sing that, uh, yeah. sing a song. If I'd known y'all were here, well, y'all find us on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> we got a couple songs on there. Yeah, just, we got, yeah. It, it didn't been so cool to have you for me yeah, to sit here yeah. and watch you guys sing together. Mm. So, as you as you minister together, and and of course, it was a different course than. What what you thought God was going to take you oh, on, yeah. especially when you were here. And then, of course, you thinking missionary to Zambia and stuff like that. What are some of the intricacies of the stresses of being a pastor and pastor's wife that you, and no one from your church is watching. <laughs> 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 you Nobody tag us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're going, uh, Mom uh, already oh, tagged man. you on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the common pressure is not the pressures of your church. Right, right, yeah. right. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't I think, dare tell you mine either. Yeah. So. Right, yeah. I think one of the common pressures is everybody has an opposite expectation of what you're supposed to be doing. One person says you're supposed to be at every event. One person says that's not what we hired you for. We don't want you at every event. Mm-hmm. And that's just an example. So I think 
the contrasting wants of everybody is a very uh, common struggle. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, um, and then just just remembering to to be able to spend time is just us. Yeah. Right. You know, because right. because we we serve together and we spend time at the church together, but that doesn't substitute for the time that we need is, is just us right and right. you know and so um one of the challenges has been finding finding that balance uh-huh. of you know um you know and setting aside a time you know intentionally saying we're gonna go spend this day together or we're gonna go to dinner this night and just forget the phones and the text messages all that right. you know so yeah, yeah yeah and i would encourage you don't let that don't let that up because yeah. the longer you're in it the the stronger the pull is to to not think of that right, right. because you, you you're just that's what you do you, you you are married to each other but yet the ministry is your life and right. so as a pastor and wife it gets it gets a little difficult at times and again like i said it's not you, you can sit and talk about it all day right you only think you know about it until you're in it right and then it's like whoa hello because I, I have a story that i uh, whenever god called me into the pastoral ministry mm-hmm. That uh, I had to go back to all my former pastors and say, "I'm sorry," because oh, yeah. I really thought I knew what they were going through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and here I was the supportive youth guy that was a volunteer youth guy, but right. man, I knew what you're going through. Right. I had no idea, so I yeah. went back to all my pastors and said, "Man, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I thought I was better supporting you than that." Mm. And and I found out that it's different. Yeah. So uh, as you see that God is bringing you to where you are has it has it been an amazing journey even to this point oh yeah absolutely yeah and it's like you said it's 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 fun to look back and see our expectations even after being married Mm -hmm. and then seeing how god was working even in those situations to bring us where we're at now right you know and that that's part of the the fun of it is being it being able to retrospectively say wow that was i i see where god was was working and what he was doing yeah it's hard because you got to wait till you get past it so you could look back and be like (laughs) oh it makes sense now but yeah yeah, and i think it's really neat because Neither, it's, I'll just say what my mom said. My mom said, neither one of you on your own is a significant singer, <laughs> but together y'all sound amazing and right. y'all have this quality that y'all could never have on your own. Yeah. And I just think that's so true in the ministry and when God brings you your life partner, like to get like a part, you're okay. And you, yeah. you know, God can do great things, but finally when he brings you for us, when he brought us together, we were able to do so much more and experience so much more than we ever would have been able to on our own Amen. see well, that wisdom it. bomb she just dropped that's yeah. why i say they keep me because of her <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like, like most guys go, you know, it's been pretty cool yeah, right yeah <laughs> the wife comes and goes well god really yeah. like, wow like god why couldn't i have said right, that right yeah, yeah why didn't i think of that yeah really. and that's why they brought them he brought them us oh, so yeah. because we won't think of that right absolutely <laughs> i tell you what it's really been cool watching from the young guy that came up here long hair barefooted on the platform playing that guitar yeah. uh, working on working at the grocery store to see man God just take you and just mm. move you into this has just been fun to watch mm. I'll be honest with you it's been so cool and then to see that he brings you somebody like Mike into your life and how he puts you two together and how you're ministering together I, mm. I know I know if, if I'm proud of you, I know everyone that's known you for even longer here at First Baptist West, I know they're proud of you. And Kaylee, I know you and your family just love the fact of what God's doing in their life. We do. It's it's nice to see how they complement each other and just how like how it's worked. I don't want to feel like worked in their favor and how it's helped them develop into where they're at. And right. Especially like moving and all that. That's a scary thing to have to do together, but that they had the faith and they can lean on each other with that. It's Amen. nice to see. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you see, and I, I, and I know that's kind of a blind question and you, you can't say yes because right. none of us know where we're going as you already found out in your ministry. But do you see God ever moving you into the senior Senior pastor, you know, well, not at your church, not at the church. Well, I'll be honest with you. There's, there's been conversations, you know, and it's, you know, right now, uh, I, the, my honest answer is I don't know what I would do. You know, I don't know how the Lord would lead, um, but uh, 
um because i've told micah just in complete honesty it's like i've done music for so long to not be in that role anymore would be difficult you yeah, know and right. so but um but it's it's very possible i mean i never thought i'd be you know an associate pastor and preaching on a sunday and you know it's uh it's a long way from where i thought i'd be so right yeah so um it's definitely in the realm of possibility yeah yeah right, right. so you enjoy being in south texas yeah, yeah, it's it's great. We're only two and a half hours from the beach. We go down and we go fishing. We've been like five or six times this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. just this summer, man. It's been great. I should show you some of the pictures we got of the fish we caught while we were down there. You go to the beach, two hours from the beach. Yeah, yeah. you know, I always tell, I always say, God's got a great sense of humor. He gave me such a passion for the beach. And he puts me in Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> middle of land. I can't hop hours from any beach. But, right. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah. uh, so you're excited. God's working. And you guys are being blessed. Again, I want you to know back. Like I said, I could sit here and talk to you forever. Oh, yeah. But we, we need to move on. But, man, I appreciate you guys coming. I'm so proud of y'all. And just to get to watch you be a part of your life. <laughs> and uh, you, you are, you've been a blessing to me. So you mind if I pray over you real quick? Before Not we at get all. Started? I'll take any prayer I can get. So. Okay, well, let me pray over both yeah. you. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for uh, your watch care. And, and God, I thank you for Matthew and for Micah. I thank you for what they mean to me personally. And God, how I know what they mean to their family and to uh, the, the church they're serving in now. And God, I pray that you would continue to work through them and bless their ministries in a great way. And God, keep them faithful to each other, strongly uh, supporting one another. And God, in difficult times, that they know of all things that that you're there for them and and they're there for each other. And God, just show them favor in their ministries and continue to uh, just use them in in the greatest ways possible. And God, I, again, thank you for them. I thank you for their families. Just continue to show favor on them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, Amen. thank you for coming and being a part. It's great to see yeah, you. It's, it's good to see you, too. You. Thanks for so, having us come in. Oh, yeah. it's been a pleasure. been a pleasure. Love both of you. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and, and then we're going to go to our Bible study, and we'll come back and finish out the show. All right, let's go. 20 First Baptist West. We've had to cancel our worship services. That included no more hearing of the word in person and one of the hardest difficulties we face so far, which is canceling time of fellowship to enjoy one another's company. In the small ray of light that was False Creek has also been put out. But there is a new light of hope. There is our summer camp of 2020. First Baptist West students will be able to enjoy a time of fellowship relaxation and worship in this beautiful cabin Ooh, look at those nice rooms and nice patio all up in the woods now join with me as we meet together july 8 through the 10th for a fantastic voyage into the great outdoors of broken bow oklahoma the cost will be $70 per person. That'll provide you for your meals while we're in the cabins. That'll provide your cabin fee. And that'll also provide you a beautiful t-shirt designed by yours truly. However, on the way up and the way down, you'll need to bring money or at least a packed lunch. And dinner on the way home will not be provided. Well, I guess it will be provided. But if you want to eat out, you'll have to bring your own money. Registration will be coming shortly. Stay updated. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us in our program and sticking around for our Bible study tonight. I'm excited to share a word with you, and then we'll get back to our program. Uh, tonight, what I wanted to share is, is with all the chaos that seems to be going around in our nation. And I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks and even in my messages about how Jesus is our answer and what I want to talk about tonight is God was dealing with the nation of Israel in pretty much the same times we were. And what he did was he was talking to them about famine. 
He said, there's going to come a famine. But I want to read out of the book of Amos, uh, if I could, please. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. And it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east, and they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. You know, if, if I, I'm sure that when Amos preached this word that a lot of people said, there's going to be a famine, and the word famine meant something to the nation of Israel. It, it worried them. But when he said, there's not going to be a famine of bread, there's not going to be a, a thirst for the water, I'm sure all of them went, okay, good. Well, then what, what's the problem? And he said, but the problem is going to be that you're not going to be able to have the word of the Lord. And they kind of accepted that. And I, I began to think about us today in, in, in our country, that we would grab attention when there's a famine of, of, of famine of food, and if there's a famine of water, thirsting of water, that people would take notice, but it was the word of God being taken away that people are not noticing. And, and what I wanted to do tonight, just share very quickly, a couple of things, because it is the word of God that made Israel great. It is the people in other lands would marvel at their power because God would be blessing them. My friends, I even preached this past Sunday morning that it is God's power, it is his word that is making our nation great. We are a blessed nation. We are uh, beyond anything that we've ever imagined. We've been given all these things. And so we are a blessed nation. People marvel at the power and the success of our nation. And God promised them that the people would always notice them. My friends, God has blessed America and America is being noticed. And people would begin to desire, hopefully, the direction that God is leading us. But not only is it the word of God that made them great, but it's the word of God that gave them direction. It gave them a purpose. That gave them, And as a result of God's word giving them direction, it gave them unity. And it is what God's word that unifies our spirit. Following God's standards kept them in line, kept them together. And it's, we lose the standards. What we notice is that when we take God's standard out, even the crooked will look straight and the straight will look crooked. The Bible tells us there's coming a time that evil will be considered good and good considered evil. That's when we are removing the word of God from our lives and from our hearts, from our families. And that we'll begin to follow other things. It's the word of God presented to them that would bring them back. It's when we speak the truth of the word of God that people will be able to be drawn back. But unless we are in the word of God, unless we as the church and we as Christians are speaking the truth, speaking the way God wants us to go, then my friend, people have no hope. There is no direction for them to return. And so we need to be sharing that word. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says this though. It says, Pre, uh, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, uh, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned away to fables. People will not desire this word, my friends. They're not going to desire this, but we still need to speak it to them. We need to not water it down. We need to not appease people but we need to be pleasing God by sharing His truth. Galatians 1.10, Paul was dealing with people that were saying that he was watering down the gospel, trying to please, because at this time, uh, the, some of the, even the apostles were saying for the people, for the Gentiles to be saved, they would have to receive Christ, but yet they would also have to keep parts of the law. And Paul was saying, no, that's not true. And so they were saying, then you're appeasing people. But Paul wrote in Galatians 1.10, if I were still trying to please men, I would not and could not be a servant of Christ. So my friends, we need to speak the truth because the truth is what is, is hope. The truth brings peace. The truth brings direction. Our country needs to hear the truth. My friends, for them to hear the truth, we as Christians and we as the church need to be speaking the truth. And the way that we're going to be speaking the truth is if we're in the truth ourselves on a daily basis. So I want to encourage you tonight. Do what our country desperately needs. And that's not to be told everything is good. But it is to be told what God desires for men's hearts. That God desires to reconcile man. That we do not have the rights and the privileges to do whatever we want to do and stay strong. 
because it will only bring confusion. So let me encourage you tonight. Find yourself in the Word of God. That's the hope for you. That's the hope for your families. That's the hope for our church. And most definitely is the hope of this great nation. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight. And, and I want to encourage you to join us Sunday morning as we get back into our worship time. We're going to have a great time together. But let's get back to our program. But before I do, let's, let's, let me pray with you, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for your love and your grace. God, thank you for this program tonight. And I pray that, Father, people are seeking your word. And I know we're living in times that people are not desiring it. But, Father, that we as your people would continue to speak it boldly, but lovingly and with truth. That, God, we could see direction and purpose for each one of us. God, just continue to bless our nation and use us as the church to reach, reach people. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, and let's get back to our program. All right. Well, thank you for listening to our Bible study tonight. And, and uh, I want to again thank Micah and Matthew for coming and being a part of our program tonight. So as you see, we now have another guest. And uh, this is PJ, and he is here tonight uh, talking. If you were in our services or you watched the live stream uh, last week during our Celebrate Freedom, that we prayed over you as you were about to embark on a new segment of life, man. So tell everybody what's going to be happening to you. Well, I enlisted in the U.S. Army and I leave for Missouri on the fifth. Right, and that's Sunday morning, right? Yes. So you have to. So where do you, where are you going to go to leave? Do you go to Fort Sill and then leave out from um, there, or um, initially I'm going to go to the Renaissance Hotel in uh -huh. OKC, and then oh, the okay. next morning on Monday they're actually going to fly me out. Okay, so you leave here, go to Oklahoma City on Sunday, and yes. then you fly out. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So how how are you how are you feeling about that? Well, it's, it's coming. <laughs> part of me is like. I have freedom. The other part of me is like, well, I've never really been used to just being out on my own and just like having right. all the responsibility on me because, you know, problem child, middle child. Yeah. So now whatever I do is going to reflect on me. So in a way, I'm excited for it. And I'm ready to go and be my crazy self in the army. And then at the same time, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to respond to being out on my own, but. Right. Well, one thing about it from what I know about the military, you won't have to worry about a whole lot of decisions. That's true. They're going to be telling you what to they do. They make them for me, and I just act them That's out. That's right. You just have to do what they <laughs> yeah. want. So, how, so how, your, your your dad has served full time in the military now for over mm -hmm. twenty years. Yes. Uh, so you've been traveling around. You're you're used to this military lifestyle. Yeah. Um, are you apprehensive any about making this your career? Yes, I've actually been thinking about that. I've been thinking about what schools I'd want to go to. Uh -huh. Like airborne's already a must. I'm trying to do that. And then I've been debating trying Special Forces, but I know I would want to think of trying Ranger School. But uh, college, meh, it's kind of the reason why I enlisted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you attended college for a little while, right? For yes. a year or so. For a year. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. For a year, you attended mm -hmm. a year at Cameron. Yeah. And then you decided that the military was the life for you, huh? Yeah. After that second semester, I was like, okay, this was a mistake. Let's go into the Army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you were ready for that. Hey, real yeah. quick, I want to say to Ron and Kathy Callen, they're here and they're they're saying hi to you. All right. Anthony Armandi is here. Okay. Uh, your mom, your mom is here. Moses watching. So you got a whole bunch of people All supporting right. you here. So uh, you, you leave here, you go to Missouri. Yes. All right. What, what's the step after that? Well, when I get there, they're gonna um, put me into these two weeks of quarantine. And then there is reception, which is where they get you all your stuff, like new pairs of glasses, all your army clothes, and say goodbye to everything civilian. And then they basically assign me to my unit. And then after that week, they send me over to the unit, and that's where all the yelling and crazy starts. Right, right. Yeah. So what, what are you hoping for? What, what, what are you wanting to try to do from the time you leave here what, what are you, you said something about special forces stuff like that mm -hmm. is there a certain segment of things you want to learn to do um, as a career i really just like just like new friendships that i make uh -huh. so i really just want to have a good time living life get out of the mainland and far away from right. no offense but home 
yeah. and just go like Germany, Korea, Japan, so everywhere want, else except here. You want to see the world, huh? Yeah. Well, I, okay, you say get away from home. I do understand that. How, do you, how, how are your parents feeling about this? Well, the first time I told my dad about how I wanted to go to Germany, he was like, well, how about you try somewhere in the States first? <laughs> so I think it's just a thing of trying to get the hang of it, like being out on my own. Uh -huh. They just want me, like everything to go smoothly. But the way uh -huh. I'm thinking about it is I've always heard about places out of the States and about how fun it is to be there. Right. And I'm just ready to just kind of shoot right into it. But are, are you are you nervous at all? Are you getting any nervous feelings? About um, it? no, not really. Except I haven't really been like, like, under like the military shark attack terms they have, where they just right. yell at you for mm -hmm. a while. Not like the actual real thing either. So, I know it's not gonna really break me or anything like that. I'm just interested to see like how it would feel like to be like have them in your face again, you know? Now, now your brothers, you and your brothers were in ROTC mm -hmm. in high school and in college, right? Yes. So, you, you again, and then you've traveled, you've seen your dad. So, military has been in your blood for some time. So, right. other than it's actually now you doing it full time, right. life is, you, you're kind of used to this, right? Exactly. Just the whole moving around thing, I'm used to that. And apparently, it's already installed in my my mindset, like my character and everything, because when I was in high school, my psychology teacher, without me even saying anything, was like, you're a military kid, aren't you? I was like, yes, how did you know? She was like, you think completely different from every other kid I've ever taught in my life. Right. So like, well, I, I don't know, just growing up in a military home, I guess the values have just been installed, I guess. Well, now you, you, you moved to Oklahoma from Hawaii, am I yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Now, that was a big change in, in, in situation, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I was kind of excited because of the new, the fresh start. But when the only water you have to jump in is either a pool or a place with a bunch of rocks and things you don't know is in there, yeah, kind of frustrating so, on that side. But. So, we're, so we're, I think I'm sensing a common theme here tonight. Is it's beach. <laughs> yes. Places with beaches. Yes. You can't drop off of a wave with a bodyboard when the only thing you got is some back off waves from a jet ski. It just yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I, I think maybe God is telling me that that's what's in my future one day. When I retire, <laughs> I go to the beach. You need to. I, I, I do. Money. I do. Yeah. Okay, before we go, though, uh, when your brother was here a couple on one of our first shows, we were honoring uh, our graduates and uh, Joseph, who's going to West Point here in the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. He brought up something that was going on that day, and it was a, something about a boxing match. Now, he gave a story, and you tried to chime in a little bit, but you didn't get a great chance. Now, he said that he kind of cleaned your clock a little bit. Mm. I, I want to just very quickly tell me the real story. Okay, the real story. So, you put on the gloves, and our family's hyping us up. Our dad was really just like chilling inside. Our mom was out there like, don't hurt anyone. And then there was Moses. He was kind of like my inside guy. No, I think Buffalo was my inside guy and Moses was Joseph's. So we're going crazy and like fist bumping everyone, like hyping each other. So I'm already in like this kind of like kill kind of mode. <laughs> so I'm not going to brag or anything, but I would like to think <laughs> you're not kind of you fit. Will, right? I mean, yes, I am. But I could take body shots a lot. So the whole time... I was really guarding my face, so there was one time that Joseph went for uh, a hook, and that's when I hit him, the large just punch right to, I think it was his right eye. Yeah, so kind of stunned him a little bit. So it was then I knew that Joseph was going to come back harder. So Joseph started coming kind of crazy, and I knew it because I saw his face getting red, and kind of, I can imagine if this was a cartoon, he would have steam coming out of his ears by now, because right. Joseph, so... You were kind of thinking about, okay, don't go too hard kind of thing. But then I came in, and I hit him harder because I thought he hit me hard, like, than what yeah. we discussed earlier. So then it was just a full-on brawl, and no one was stopping us. <laughs> so so boxing went out the window, and you just went after each other, right? Yes, with gloves on, basically. <laughs> so what ended up happening was, actually, I can barely even remember, really. But all I know is that... We were lucky that Joseph had a good face for this little broadcast here. Yeah, he, he came on yeah. and he looked pretty cool. So, Kaylee, see what you missed out on not being a guy? That this I, I had five brothers. I still dealt with that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but she didn't get in the match, boxing match. I feel like she did. Yeah. I feel like she was more. It was of eat the... or get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh, like that was if she was in our family, she would be more of the house bully, and she'd be we'd be having to defend ourselves from her because. The thing about female drill sergeants is they feel like they have to prove themselves to something, so they try to act even crazier. So yeah. I feel like being a female being in a house full of males, I feel like they would like really be trying to bring the thunder. Does that make sense? Let's just is say, that how you are? Uh, let's just say they dominate. So pretty much you're saying if I were your sister, I'd kick your butt, right? No, that's no. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think that's that's what that's I heard. What I think right? I think I feel no, like you I would feel pressure. I, I, <laughs> no. I hear domination. I'm hearing uh, she would feel the pressure of having to go against me, and so that I would kick your, your butt. mom. No, <laughs> hey, hey, your mom. Real quick before we go, your mom said she's gonna miss about y'all boxing each other. Well, we can do it again when we go home, and then well, we can have a video yeah. and send it to Holly, you guys. You so we got, got proof. You got the next few so, days. You so, hear this, Joseph? Just know. There will be a proof video of us there boxing. You go. So, yeah. All right. Hey, we're, I just want you to know we're proud of you. Uh, right. We're excited for you, and we, we pray that God will use you as you go from here and, and make a career out of the military. And uh, We just want you to know we're proud of you, and we will be here for you, and uh, you got the whole church supporting you in this, right. okay? So, thank But thank you for coming tonight, yeah. and, and be safe when you travel, and I hope to see you probably the next day or so before you head out. All right, okay. be great. Well, yeah. let me pray with you, and then you have a great 4th of July, and go Army. All right. All right, yeah. let's pray. Father, thank you for today, and thank you for the blessings you've given us. And God, I thank you for PJ and directing him in his life as you have. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue to uh, just give him, show him favor, Lord, as he goes from here, and he goes to Missouri and starts his career. And Father, I pray that you would strengthen his body and his spirit, and also his resolve, Lord, is I know he's going to be tested in many ways, not just militarily, but Lord, even in the in the society, uh, with the new people that's going to be coming into his life. I pray a hedge of protection around him, and that God, he would remember uh, at all times, Lord, to stay focused on you, and that God, he can do that, and that he he would work through him. God, I thank you for everything that you're doing, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, thank you, everybody, for coming. Katie, great job tonight. You passed the second test. You're barely. getting close. Yeah, barely. <laughs> barely. You're getting closer. My daughter said that she was still at 100% at the Jade end. Jade said so. I did good. Jade said, yeah. yeah. Jade, Jade's, Jade's she's a little biased. Today. Yeah, she's a little biased because she's, she's not on my side tonight. So <laughs> anyway, hey, folks, thank you for coming. And we want to encourage you to join us Sunday morning uh, live here at 830 or 1045. If you're not able to do that, then join us at our 1045 service. And then please remember that starting tomorrow, we'll have everything posted online about uh, Patrick and, and Sadie coming. And uh, I know you're excited about that as well, as you were part of the search team yes. that, that found him and, and been praying over this. So good. Kaylee's done a good job on that. And our search team has done an amazing job as well. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. Look forward to next Wednesday night, 6.30 for our First Baptist West Facebook Live. Y'all have a great week. God bless you and have a happy, safe 4th of July. And we'll see you later. Bye -bye.